What is going on guys, Bisectatron here, bringing you today's video, and we are talking about how to defend witches. Uh, these witches are so strong right now, and they have been for quite a while in Clash, especially at the uh, Town Hall 11, Town Hall 12, Town Hall 13 levels. Let's get into it, talk about a couple ways to get the job done defensively, showing some replays here um, from our current war, and... Um, this strategy has been just dominating Town Hall 11 especially, um, spreading out the witches, in this case using the siege barracks, um, and then a couple uh, super wall breakers to let the witches into the base here. But we're going to talk about why some of these attacks are not going to be successful. And it all comes down to how spread out the witches are um, across the base and uh, the density of witches at different points, especially on the outsides or the flanks of the base. Um, as you can see in this attack, there's kind of a lone golem going along the outside, no witches behind it. Um, that's gonna be very uh, good for the defender in this case, not good for the attacker. Um, everything moving through, it does hurt the attacker, of course, that there's nothing to open up that wall, so it takes a few moments to get in there and finally get that eagle taken out. But really what's going to make this attack not successful is the fact that both flanks did not end up working out. Um, this one witch on the right side is gonna die. So all that's left is the stuff in the core. As the attacker, or sorry, as the defender, that's what you want. You want to eliminate the flanks and make it so only the troops in the core are left up. And then we have these nice uh, Teslas, mortar, uh, other defenses kind of making a little arc around the, uh, the troops, surrounding them from all sides. And witches do not do well when they are surrounded. You'll see they get picked off very quickly here. Um, good distance, the three tile from the Tesla to the walls there. Uh, the base did very well defending. And um, I hate to burn a base, but for educational purposes, sometimes you got to do it. <laughs> um, and uh, this is an example of a, a solid base um, against witches in this case. Probably could have uh, been a little closer if the attacker got a few more witches going along each flank. Um, but that's, you know, another story. And we'll talk about how to, you know, try to kill those witches that go along the flanks. Stuff like that. Um, one more attack. Then I'm going to show a couple small setups here. Um, we got to go into the... Uh, into the enemy team attacks and we're taking a look at this one right here interesting uh name for our clan mate here but um this is a a good base and the only thing i don't like is that the bomb towers uh and and the expo is okay next to the inferno because as you can see it doesn't actually get taken out by the uh the lightnings and the quake I don't like the bomb tower. It's actually somewhat valuable against witches, so you don't want to let them zap it down along with the inferno. Besides that, this is a good base for defending witches. Um, typically, the attacker is going to use the wall wrecker and try to come opposite your town hall. The last attack, not the case. Sometimes they use the siege barracks, but in my experience, the wall wrecker more often than not is used. And when that's the case, um, you want to look at the the sides opposite the town hall. Uh, how are they set up and you can see how wide this base is that's going to work to the attackers or sorry <laughs> to the defenders advantage once again um, because it's spreading out these witches so thin um, you can see here of the troops going into the core the eagle is going to go down the wall wrecker typically can secure that just by getting in there i think the wall wrecker is going to pop in just a, a moment or two here and take out the eagle but um, the queen's also in there. The thing is though, the witches are very spread thin just because the base is so wide um, and the compartments are very robust, meaning that they're gonna be picked off slowly. Giant bomb here, giant bomb there. King getting stuck on a wall there, which isn't helpful. And um, really just kind of spreading things out very nicely. Once again, a good back end with some damage, a wizard tower, the warden. Um, and these mortars are very nice on the back end too because they can just kind of rain in those uh, those mortar shells on the witches and on the skeletons, which doesn't typically, you know, matter for an attack, but when you have a bunch of skeletons um, and you have the repetitive damage of those mortars over and over again, um, they can do some damage and they have some decent range as well. So don't underestimate having the, the mortars. In this case, I think all four of them were kind of opposite the, uh, the entry, uh, meaning they were on the town hall side of the base. 
and that works uh, once again to the advantage of the defender and um, I'd say this is another good base for defending witches overall. Fast forward here, there's just uh, not anything left to take out the remainder of the base. Let us uh, switch over real quick as we wrap up this video. I want to show a couple of things um, for general witch defending. Um, in this stuff, uh, we took a look at two Town Hall 11s because that's where it's most dominant. This stuff applies pretty much to Town Hall 12 and also a little looser, but still to Town Hall 13 as well. Um, so keep that in mind. Okay, so this is a, a good little setup that I found works pretty well for witches moving along the outside. You have the splash damage of the bomb tower, then the archer tower, which is a pretty quick shooter compared to a cannon, so she can switch targets a lot quicker than a cannon. Uh, and then you have these two little bombs in that location. And what, what's going to happen is as the witch kind of moves along, keep in mind the skeletons can't trigger traps. So as the witch targets this storage right here, um, that's the likely point where one, one or both of these bombs will be triggered. The bomb tower will meanwhile be taking out skeletons as they accumulate on the elixir storage. And as that's happening, uh, the, the witch is spying new skeletons. But once the which tr uh, trips that bomb, it's going to kill the nearby skeletons. The archer tower with that range will lock on to the witch and take it out in most cases. Now keep in mind if you're not quite sure if the witches are going to be moving like along this direction or back along that direction, you might want to even have it like you know the same thing but kind of go in the opposite way if you can kind of make it work, um, you know, doing your best with what you have you can have the same setup going the reverse direction. Small bombs aren't really effective for killing wall breakers anymore just because everyone uh, is using super wall breakers, at least in friendly wars uh, in most cases. So you're better off using them. Uh, maybe like you could have it set up like that. That way the archer tower is uh, able to target the witch as soon as it trips that bomb and the skeletons most likely die. This is a good setup along the outside. Now, Okay, it is true that the golem, it's very, very hard to defend if there's a golem or like an ice golem walking as well, because oftentimes it soaks up those traps. The best way to defend against the issue of the ice golem or the golem is to not have a whole lot of defenses outside your base, and that pairs very well with the second base we saw, which was very wide and very big compartments you can fit pretty much all your defenses on the inside that's typically going to be better especially on the side in which the attacker is most likely to enter from that way the golems are going to get stuck trying to enter the base into one of these compartments and they won't walk along the outside and target your mortars and your archer towers and your cannons and whatever else you put on the outside of your base so bigger bases less defenses on the outside. And then um, over here, of course, you can use giant bombs as well. Um, typically, I like to put a giant bomb next to a defense just for like hogs and stuff like that. Um, it ensures that the the giant bomb isn't going to just kind of be wasted out there, but it doesn't have to be. You can put it between two non-defensive buildings. It's not that much of a sacrifice. This is a similar thing, but just using a wizard tower. Um, the mortars though, like I said, they are maybe the one defense you might want to have on the outside, but near your town hall, that way the attacker that uses the wall wrecker coming opposite your town hall, um, they're going to have to deal with those mortars on the back end, which is where the mortars are going to be most effective. So don't put them on the front end. Uh, you know, it's too nice of a place for the golems to latch on to. Try to put them on the back end, typically where your town hall will be, and they can do some damage to the skeletons towards the end of the attack to really help you out. Hope this video helped, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you have any other thoughts or uh, ideas in the comments. I'll be sure to check that out. And I will see you guys all in the next video. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoy my content, consider supporting the channel by entering my creator boost code, BISECT, in the settings tab of your game. And keep in mind it occasionally resets and must be re-entered. Click or tap for another video and be sure to subscribe. See you all next time. Bisectatron out.